The Widow Washington, The Life of Mary Washington by Martha Saxton. This is a beautifully written, well-researched revisionist study of the relationship between Mary Ball Washington and her son, George. Saxton adds much needed complexity to a relationship often painted as one between an uncaring and demanding mother and a dutiful son. Saxton challenges this unflattering interpretation of Mary Ball Washington as cold and greedy. In the process, she reveals the difficulties facing widows and mothers even among the 18th century's elites. Mary emerges as a three-dimensional figure who, though orphaned at a young age, ultimately marries an older man and enters Virginia's fabled planter society. Eleven years later, she's a widow deprived of most of her husband's property by colonial law and struggling to raise five children. George never understood the fears of poverty and helplessness that continued throughout her life. He dismissed them as imaginary and manipulative. Yet Mary had a significant influence on her son, passing down many of the moral and religious principles that marked his adult life. Demonstrating how both struggled with their emotions and with their fierce sense of duty to family, Saxton shows how alike mother and son truly were. I first encountered Mary and George Washington when George was complaining about having to give her money, which I thought was odd because he was an honorable man and also very rich. So I found it uh, a little stingy of him. But what really inspired me to write the book were the various portraits of Mary. Uh, when I dug a little deeper, um, she's been, you know, uh, described as everything from a saint to a horrible, illiterate, nasty, dirty old woman. And um, I just couldn't reconcile any of this with what little I knew about her. And none of this was based on, on uh, um, much uh, or any evidence. So that's what really drove me to try and give her back a life that was neither idealized nor, um, you know, the product of, of malice. Um, in terms of the takeaway from this book, I think, you know, the astonishing thing about the two of them is how much they were alike. Uh, they had very similar experiences in some ways as children, both early, uh, they early lost parents, both had to struggle financially early to help their families out, and both of them owned slaves from very early, so they became commanders in a sense. Um, George and his mother ended up uh, both very independent, both very hardworking, both um, persistent, never gave up on anything easily, uh, both quite tight-fisted, um, both great horse people, great talent there, and both lovers of gardens. Um, and uh, in many ways, just fiercely um, uh, uh, self-reliant. I think that those traits, many of them look much better on a man, even now, and certainly in the 18th century, than they, than they look on a woman. And um, so that may account for some of the malice directed toward Mary.